Welcome back. So what's the future of retirement in Canada? With changing demographics and work patterns, the landscape of retirement is shifting. What are the implications of these changes and how consumers prepare for the opportunities and challenges ahead? So with people working longer, with work looking different, what will retirement look like a decade from now? Oh, gosh, there might not be retirement, as Bill was saying earlier. Um, you know, the idea is that it's going to be really fluid and we're going to march to the beat of our own drums and decide what that future looks like. I think it will be anchored to exactly what we value and um, we'll, we'll have an opportunity to explore new horizons. We've seen recent protests in France mm -hmm. because the government pushed the age of retirement from 62 to 64. We won't get into the specifics of that, uh, but I'm curious what you think, how, how you think that will shape the conversation around retirement here in Canada? Well, personally, I mean, I, like, I, I'm an advocate of, of working until 70, if you can and if you want to, right? Because I actually ran the numbers fairly recently and the difference between, I believe, pension at 65 and 70 is like 42%. You get a, there's a 42% increase if you take your pension, if you take your CPP at 70, mm -hmm. right? And 42% is a significant amount of money. Mm -hmm. So if you can, you get to maximize it out. But should the government do something, Bill? Because presumably when governments make the decision to push back this age, it's because they're concerned about paying those obligations. Well, our, you know, our position is that uh, government uh, has to understand what the needs of the people they're trying to support and not do things for their convenience or what works from the top down. I had a meeting uh, along with some other people with some government officials around this whole issue uh, a few weeks ago. And we, when we asked why some of these decisions were being made today, the answer honestly was because that's the way we've always done it. And that kind of answer just won't do anymore. They really have to look at the needs of the people that they're supposed to be supporting. On the flip side, you could take CPP early and invest it. Uh, you could. What do you advise? Uh, whenever I hear waiting to 70 and you get 42% more on the CPP, generally, if you can afford it, you try to hold out to when you're 70 years old mm -hmm. to get that higher uh, payout. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> well, and with companies no longer offering defined benefit pensions, private pensions, I mean, the bottom line is you got a plan, right? Absolutely. I mean, so hearing this, um, missing out on 42%. It's very irritating now. Yes. But <laughs> w whenever I think about what's happening in uh, Canada as a whole, that pension plan, that golden pension plan people had it in the past, it's not, it doesn't exist anymore. And the younger generation, as they enter their retirement years, the government's going to have to do something different mm -hmm. because yeah. they will not have the same amount of money uh, yesterday's generation did. And evolution will always have to happen in the pension space. And you can hope and expect the governments in the provinces and federally to continue to push for uh, better benefits and better education as to how to take those benefits. Mm -hmm. Because it is a very confusing process mm -hmm. and it's very difficult when you start talking about numbers. It gets, people get, people just freeze and then they don't want to talk about it and they walk away. And I don't envy those in charge making these decisions. It's because on the one hand, it's hard to imagine a lot of these programs, OAS being sustainable mm -hmm. when people are collecting for 30 plus years. Actually, what happens is the chief, chief actuary officer, they revisit these plans every three years. So right now CPP is sustainable. Um, I, CPP is, sure. CPP is, but CPP is only really gonna cover 25 to 33% of your pension, of course, depending on how much you made before salary, right? But on the other hand, there are those who depend on their pensions as their sole source of income. And so if suddenly we begin to push back these ages, that's a problem for them. Yes, and <laughs> my favorite term. Um, the, the reality is that each person is so individual in the circumstance. And when we look at um, pension planning in particular, we have to take ownership over our own financial well-being. Um, 
we don't know what's going to be there. We really don't know what the future holds. Yes, we can trust that we've seen a lot over the history. And, and um, so it's how do we make decisions, partner with people who can help us to make good decisions about planning early, as early as possible, and also remembering it's never too late, and then engaging so that you feel confident that where you're headed is, is safe and, and comfortable for you and your family. I just want to circle back to the original question that I posed to Moira, which is what is the face of retirement 10, 10 years from now? What is the face of retirement 10 years from now? I, I believe it's a, an active lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, people are healthier, they're living longer, and uh, in that active lifestyle, people are going to have part-time jobs. And I do believe that the idea of retirement, is, it's, it's not 65. You're, you're probably not going to be looking to retire in the future. You're probably going to look to live your life. It's a pivot. It's not retirement. It's a pivot. It's a pivot. A new chapter. So, yeah, yeah, And exactly. Moses' philosophy has always been the only way to keep going is to keep going. Yes, and I so agree. So I take that one to heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think that is, I can't think, our son once said to us, he's 37 and pretty successful and, and uh, by the way, I always tell him, say thank you. You're successful in counterpoint. Um, it's your rebellion. He said, so he said um, that he thought that we should retire. And my husband and I looked at each other and went, that's not happening. People who do what we do don't retire. We drop dead. We're never <laughs> retiring. We love what we do. And as long as we can continue to do it, that's the way it's going to be. One final point before we go. My dad always says to me, one, he'll never retire. But I say to him, do you have a retirement plan in place? He says, you are my retirement plan. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, when I die, do I want a boatload of cash or do I want a bunch of great memories? And it's always the latter. Here All right, on that note, uh, stay right there. We'll be right back.